students and welcome to Obsidian Soft. In today's class, I will teach something important that will be useful for creating your future apps that require a database. For example, I plan to teach you how to make a quiz app with user-defined questions and answers that are loaded from a database. So basically, you will have two apps, one for making the quiz questions that is used by a parent or a teacher and one for taking the quiz where the end user is the child or the student. Now, how to make these two apps use the same database? We have multiple storage options in MIT App Inventor. So let's find out which one is suitable for our problem. We have TinyDB that stores data on the device. But first of all, this is device specific data. So the same app on another device will not be able to access this data. Secondly, even two apps on the same device can't share the same database. So this is not a solution for our app and it only works for apps like a shopping list app or a to-do tasks app that I've already taught you before. TinyWebDB is another option and as the name suggests, data is stored on the web, that is on the internet and is not device specific. The good thing is that the data can be shared among different apps, but the default TinyWebDB service is used by all MIT App Inventor developers. So just imagine the thousands of people using this service. Your data has a danger of being overwritten if someone uses the same DB tags as you. We have already talked about the DB tags when I introduced databases to you while making the shopping list app. DB tags are a way of differentiating data. A solution is to give very unique names to your tags or you can make a custom Tiny WebDB service, but that is not free and you have to pay a subscription fee. Even if you go for the free version, a trial version, you have to enter your credit card details. But let's talk about a much better and more stable solution where data has no chance of being overwritten. Remember that we use CloudDB while making our chatting app? CloudDB is also stored on a server and the default CloudDB is stored on MIT App Inventor servers. But the data is specific to an MIT App Inventor account, so it can't be overwritten by other programmers. The only problem is that the data in default CloudDB is app specific, so the same database can't be shared by two different apps. However, what we can do is make our own CloudDB by hosting it on our own Redis. Redis stands for Remote Dictionary Server and is a fast, open source, in-memory, key value data store that is used by real-time applications like games, financial apps, healthcare apps, and even Internet of Things, that is IoT. Don't be intimidated by the complicated definition. In simpler terms, it is just a server on the internet where you can run your own cloud DB that can be used by more than one app and more than one user. And it is super fast, so ideal for our problem statement of the two quiz apps. Again, Hosting your own Redis is not free, but I will tell you a way in which you can have a few cloud DBs, small sized, for free. It has some limitations, but the great thing is that you don't have to pay a single dollar or enter your credit card details to try the free version. In the future, when you have to make larger databases and you want to have more end users, you can have a paid account, but the option that I will be telling you about, that is the free option, is perfect for startups and school or college projects. So let's host our own Redis server and make our own cloud DB that can be used by more than one app. First of all, visit the official website of Redis Labs. I will give the link in the video description. Click on the try free button on the top right. Click on sign up with Google. Choose your account. So it is welcoming me and by default Amazon Web Services is chosen, just stay with that and choose a location that is closer to you and click on let's start free. So it has been created and we can store multiple cloud DBs here for our different apps but the only problem is that we are only allowed 30 MB of space and you're only allowed 30 connections that is 
30 people can connect to this database at the same time. So once you're satisfied with the server and you need more space or more connections, you can choose a paid plan. So if I click on this Obsidian Free DB, I can look at its properties and these properties I will need to fill up when I'm creating my Cloud DB component in MIT App Inventor's screen design, okay? So this, this public endpoint and this part before the colon is the Redis server address. This is the port. So I'm just going to copy it and I'm going to open up a text software like TextEdit or Notepad and paste this server address here. So this is the port. I'm going to cut this 13707 and this is the port. So the number after the colon is the port and I'm going to remove this colon and this is the server address. Okay. So I have to remember all these things. And if I go down under security, we have this default user password. So copy this too. Okay. So I've written it here. So I have now three things here, a server address, a port and a password. Okay. Now I'm going to open up MIT App Inventor and make two projects to test my new database, okay? So open up MIT App Inventor, click on start new project, name it test saving data app. For screen one's properties, make align horizontal center, align vertical center. Go down and change the title to save data app. Add a text box from user interface and a button. Let's rename this text box to names. So for testing, I'm just going to be entering names and trying to save them to the database by pressing the submit button. So I'm going to rename the button to submit button, okay? I'm not going to spend time on beautifying this screen because this is just for testing. I just need Cloud DB from storage. So go to storage, drag and drop the Cloud DB, which is a non-visible component. Now, this is important. For this Cloud DB component, we have these four properties, okay? So I'm going to change this project ID to test DB, okay? I'm going to change the Redis port to the port that we had copy pasted earlier. So 13707, so just Copy it again and paste it here. The server address, again copy it and paste it here. And the password, now where does the password go? It goes inside this token field. So delete whatever was written there before and just copy paste the one from the Redis server. Okay, and this is important, uncheck this use SSL. So this is not basically a secure database. This is another limitation of the free Redis account that it is not secure, so don't use it to pass sensitive information. Please use a paid account if you plan to make apps storing sensitive personal information of users. Now remember these properties, our properties for our other app will be exactly the same, okay? now. Drag and drop a list view below this button. So go to user interface and drag and drop a list view here, okay? Now go to the block section. For the submit button click event, what we're going to do is we are going to add whatever is inside our names text to our cloud DB. So we have this procedure called append value to list. We have used these in our chatting app. So the tag is names and the item to add is whatever is inside our names text. So the text box and I'm going to empty the names text after submitting so that a user does not have to delete it every time he wants to save a new name to the database. So set names text to empty.
Now, this append value to list triggers the data change event for DB once the data is actually saved in the database. So if I go to cloud DB, I have this event when cloud DB dot data changed and this event will be triggered when this is successful. So let's populate our list view when the data is changed so that we know that the data has been successfully saved. So if my tag is equal to names, we don't want to update the list view with some wrong data. So we are going to check the tag that it is the same as this tag, the one that we saved. Okay, so I'm going to go to control and get the if block and I'm going to go to logic and get the equal to block and I'm going to hover over tag and get its getter and I am just going to duplicate names from here. So if the data changed belongs to the same tag as the tag that we are interested in that is names, we are going to update our list view. So go to list view and get its set list view dot elements and give it the list of data that has been returned by the cloud DB. Okay. And what you want to do is another way of checking if our DB is working is that when the screen is initialized, try to get the existing data from the database. So go to screen one and get its initialize event. And inside it, we are going to call cloud DB's get value procedure because we want to get existing value related to this tag. So just duplicate this tag and bring it here and if there's no data belonging to this tag in the database, then we are just going to make it an empty list. When it is successful, this will trigger the got value event in the cloud DB. So go to cloud DB and get its got value event. And inside it, the code is exactly the same as data change. So just duplicate it and bring it here. So we have done similar coding for our chatting app. Okay, and we use the cloud DB there too in exactly the same way. Test this app and you will see that when we enter the names, they will be saved in the database. Now remember that this free Redis server does not work for iOS. It gives some authentication errors. So just use it for an Android device. Okay, now let's make another app which will be actually loading the data just like the screen initialize from our cloud DB, the same cloud DB so that we know that two apps can use the same cloud DB. So click on project, start new project, name it testing load data app. Change screen title to load data app. Okay. And this app only has a list view. So drag and drop a list view from the user interface and from storage, drag and drop a cloud DB. And for the cloud DB, we have to give exactly the same properties that we gave for our saving data app. So the project ID is test DB. The port is, again, we have to use the same ones that we had copy pasted in our text document that we got from the Redis server. The server address, again, copy paste it instead of default and the password goes in place of token. And make sure to uncheck use SSL. Now the code is very simple for this. Just go to the block section. When the screen is initialized, we are going to call the cloud DB and try to get data for our names tag. So click on cloud DB, call the procedure, get value with the tag names. So this is important, the tag should be exactly the same as the one that we used in our previous app. And value of tag is not there is an empty list. Okay, as you know that this will trigger the got value event so click on cloud db 
when cloud db dot got value I'm going to first of all check if my tag that is returned by got value is the same as names. So if block from control from logic and equal to block get tag on the left hand side and on the right hand side we are going to just duplicate this names tag put it here. So if the tag is equal to names, I'm just going to set my list view. So click on list view dot elements to whatever the data has been returned by the cloud DB and that is get value. So get value will return a list if there's existing data inside the database. And as we have used the same cloud DB properties for both the apps, this will work. So let's test it out. So this was successful as you can see that it is returning the same names that we had saved using our first app and the same names are coming in the list view. I hope you like this tutorial. Do like the video and share it with your friends and family. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel, kindly do it so that you don't miss any of the cool projects that I have planned for you. Thank you for watching my video. Have a good day and goodbye.